My goal is that by the end of this video, you'll have a very solid understanding of how to find, evaluate, and execute successful trades with oversold or discounted stocks using these swing trading methods that have worked for me. But as always, it's super important to keep in mind that there's never any guarantees within the stock market. And that's why it's so important for you to do your own research and also sign up with a paper trading or rewind trading platform that allows you to simulate your trades using fake money because it's the time that you spend using those programs that are going to allow you to polish off your skills so that once you start using real money, you'll be competent enough to be able to consistently be profitable within the market. But anyways, all I ask for you in return is that you hit that like button and also subscribe if you see value in the following video. Anyways, the platform that we're going to be using today is Thinkorswim. It's my preferred platform for day trading and swing trading as well as some longer term investments. It's available through the broker TD Ameritrade. You just have to go on their website. It's completely free. You don't even have to fund the account. Um, I think it does ask you for a social security number. You just put that in and then you pledge the soul of your firstborn, and that's all you need to do. And they have the absolute best chart, so it's totally worth it. Once you've opened up the platform, head over to the scan function. Now, for those of you who are familiar with my use of automatic watch lists, the reason that I'm using the scan function today instead of these guys is because I'm specifically looking for swing trades instead of day trade positions. And these are configured for day trading positions, so not optimal for swing trades. So not optimal if you're trying to hold for a longer period of time because they generally look for stocks that are being oversold intraday. And then the next step you're going to want to do once you're at the scan function is you want to configure the criteria. For my swing trades, I like to set slightly larger cap stocks because as a general rule, I avoid holding really small sketchy companies overnight. I also want high volume because I want to be able to get into and out of my trades with relative ease. And the most important part is to set a custom study filter that finds stocks that the RSI is indicating as oversold. So to do this, you just go here and do the following. Boop, 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 boop. Also, we are setting it to 30 because under this line, it's considered oversold. If you look at the actual RSI, this will look familiar to you if you've been watching these videos. Um, everything that's under the bottom yellow line is oversold. And as a result, and that that line is set to 30 because we're very cautious investors. So you want to make sure that the stocks that we're trying to take positions in are indeed oversold. And 30 is a much better price point than say 40 because 40 is a little bit too close to the fair value range. And 30 is like you, if it's below 30, there's a solid chance and the probability is in your favor that you're probably dealing with a stock that is indeed oversold. And woohoo, now you have a study filter. So then go ahead and scan. Now, don't, now I should note that these are pretty specific and conservative criteria. They're very cautious, specifically the volume, right? Because if you lower the amount of volume, you'll get a lot more stocks. But the reason that I do this is because these stocks that are on this list are much more likely to be oversold and will in the end be more consistently profitable than trading lower volume, low float stocks. I find that it's easier to predict higher volume stocks as well as obviously easier to get into and out of your positions. With swing trades, obviously it doesn't matter as much, but it still matters that you wanna be liquid if you need to get out at the drop of a hat. And this is just what has worked for me. If you find that you work better with a different configuration, then you can easily adjust the scan function and there's a million other different studies that you could use. I also have a video on that in the description below. Once that's up, you can quickly type in some of the tickers in your quick chart on the left. Also, if you're unfamiliar with this platform, which is Thinkorswim, um, and want to know how to set it up, I put a link in the description below to my video on that. It's I think it's less than eight minutes. It's a real quick, it's a real quick watch, and it's pretty essential if you're completely new to the platform. Okay, so let's plug in the first stock. H-E-L-E -E looks like it's nearing six months support, but with so much more room to run down to your long support, I don't even really want to look at it anymore, so that's X'd. I always talk about wanting to trade like a spoiled brat, AKA you don't get everything that you want. You don't want to take a position. You don't want to waste your time looking at it. Next, I'll check AXGN. This chart also sucks. This chart also sucks. This is a solid downward trending pattern and a breakaway below long-term support. Again, this is why it's so important to be picky when you're choosing stocks to trade because a lot of people will just see a chart and they'll fall in love with it or they'll fall in love with the fundamentals of the company, which honestly is probably worse, but they fall in love with it and then they hold and they hope and it just keeps going down and then they're just like, oh, where's all my money? So be careful of that. So let's plug in the next stock, TVTY. Okay, this chart looks a bit more interesting because it had a, mess, a massive sell-off towards the end of the year and now there's massive upward potential and a high probability that the stock has been oversold. And at that point, we'll look to see if there's any fundamental issues with it. But for now, this one checks out. So let's see if we can get a few more. 
Okay, so I could go through the whole list, but I see UFI has had a massive sell-off today of just under 20%, and that could be a good opportunity for us. This chart looks interesting to me because while we do have a sell-off overall, what we keep seeing are these rapid downtrends and then 30 to 40% bounces and then a continued sell-off later. So I'll add this to the list. Now we'll plug in one more stock. I like this one, PG&E, which is the power and gas company that just filed for bankruptcy. Being in California, they're actually my house's power and gas company. So they gouge us every month. You see it having a massive sell-off, but the problem here is that if you look into the fundamentals, we see that they are filing for bankruptcy, like I mentioned earlier. So if you're buying into the stock, on a swing position, it's going to need to be a value play based on the long-term re regeneration of the company. The reason that I'm bringing this up is because you can't just look at these stocks without knowing anything about them. Generally speaking, you're going to want to look a little bit into what is going on so that you can get a good idea. And I'm going to be showing you this a little bit with the other stocks that we chose on the list. But you have to have a basic idea going in of what these stocks are going to be doing, right? So you want to just Google the tickers, pull up the news and see what happens so that you have a general feel. Somebody actually asked about this stock earlier on the Zip Trader Circle Facebook group and I gave them my take on it. If you have any questions for me, by the way, the best ways to ask me questions as well as the other Zip Traders. And honestly, it's one of the best trading circles out there because nobody else calls their trading group circle. So, and honestly, if you're a smart trader, a circle is the place for you. Going back to pg e it does have potential though being one of the largest power providers in California. Nonetheless, this is a fundamental play and we are mainly discussing technical indicators of a stock being oversold. So I won't add it to the list. Okay, so we have two tickers that I like, so we'll move over to the main chart and then check them out. So since we are taking a swing position, we are going to want to focus on the longer term chart. So with the three year chart, we kind of see this like gap up and then struggle to recover pattern starting here. And that worries me because it could be a sign that the company is going to continue is going to continue to break down. If we pull up the 180 day chart, we could see a solid line of upward potential. Um, I wouldn't be quick to call it upward potential all the way to 59.85 because of the fact that it had barely held there a very short period of time. But if you were really bullish, you could make that argument. You could make that argument. Um, but as a risk averse investor, though, I'll err on the safe side and mark the point where it broke down past the SMA line. But you're going to have to make that call. For me personally, I'm very risk averse. I'm going to err on the safe side and mark the point where it broke down past the SMA line as its previous resistance and thus the upward potential that it has. Now, again, like just because it has upward potential doesn't mean that it's going to go there. It just means that the probability is in your favor if you have more upward potential than downward potential. Okay, now with that being said, I'd be persuaded to take a position if we once again see a dip below the oversold line and also potentially show some uptrends intra week over the SMA line just to show that there is actually some strength. Okay, the next ticker was UFI. Let me type that in. Um, that was the one that got beat down like a rabid dog today. I always like to do a quick Google News search when we see massive changes like this just to see if there's some huge shift in fundamentals and they missed quarter two revenue guidance. Now, honestly, not exactly groundbreaking news. Now, just generally with revenue guidance, if they miss it or if they exceed it, generally speaking, there's going to be an overhype in either direction. So that means that if a company exceeds revenue guidance that people are probably going to overbuy into the stock. And if they miss the revenue guidance, like in this situation, people are probably going to oversell the stock and you're going to see a decent amount of bounce. Of course, this is generally, it's not going to happen every time, but once we can see price action to trade off of, that's when you want to take a position. So just to reiterate, not exactly groundbreaking news here. So without knowing anything else about the company, we can assume that on average, on average, that this is going to be an over exaggeration and the stock price is at least somewhat oversold. So that opens up some opportunity for us. Of course, the RSI is indicating this to be the case as well. But the reason I feel comfortable taking a swing position in this is because we are right at the bottom in terms of long term support. If you pull up the three year and thus our upside potential is much more than our downside potential. You need more upside potential than downside potential in order to validate taking a position. If you have $1 worth of upside potential, but you have $1,000 of downward potential, is it really worth taking that position? It's not for me. If you really like gambling, go to Vegas. Don't go to the stock market. That being said, the stock should continue to sell off. So we'd want to tread lightly and sell out if we see it show signs of a reversal, such as dipping farther and farther below the SMA line once it adjusts to the dip. Um, if you want to see more tips on how to spot a reversal, I put a link in the description to my video on the two steps to spot a stock reversal. 
So go ahead and check that out if you need more reinforcement of this material, which it makes sense that you would if you're completely new. I highly recommend getting as much education as possible. But anyways, this is a simple process, but the secret is that you have to be able to accurately identify stocks that are not just oversold, but also have a high likelihood of recovering within a decent time span because you don't want to be stuck holding these stocks for like months, right? You don't want to be stuck in these stocks for more than three or four months. It's just, it's ridiculous. You don't want to tie up all your money. It's not the best way to make money in the stock market. And you want to be able to, you want to be able to get in and out of these stocks fairly quickly. With swing trading, obviously you're holding for a little bit longer periods, but another key for this is finding stocks that have been oversold many times in the past, but also have a history of recovering. So Tesla is a great example of this as there are so many different price points to get in at a discount and each time on this chart you would have made money if you bought in when the RSI was indicating that it was oversold and then you sold out when the RSI then later indicated that it was overbought. Now easy to say looking back right it's easy for me to look at the chart and be like oh look you know this is where you should have bought in that's where you should have sold out but there's clear signs of a reversal before every single time that the stock went up and before every time that the stock went down and if you want to know more about how to spot a reversal you can check out my two simple steps of a reversal video in the description below. Anyways, if you found value in this video, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already for more short, sweet, and simplified videos on how to trade the stock market. And I'll see you guys in the next video.